in the idyllic landscape of Kamdevkati village in the north 24 Parganas district of West Bengal, Samarendranath, a septuagenarian, seems undaunted by the task at hand. As far as the eye can see, the water fields here are filled with water hyacinths and his job is to collect them. Collecting these deeply invasive weeds might be labor intensive, but it is more profitable than his earlier job as a construction worker. এখন সমস্যা দেখছি না এখন সমস্যা আসছে কোচলটা অনেক অনেক জায়গায় নষ্ট হয়ে গেছে এখানে ছয় সাত বছর কাজ করছি এর আগে এই বর্ষার সময় একটু অসুবিধা হয় এখন আগের থেকে একটু উন্নতি হয়েছে Earning 300 to 400 rupees a day, Samarendranath's job every day is to collect, chop and bundle these weeds. These hyacinth stem bundles then make their way to surrounding village homes where they are sun-dried and given a new life in the form of paper or yarn. Found abundantly in ponds, lakes and any kind of natural water, water hyacinths have been known to be a menace worldwide, growing at ferocious speeds to cover water surfaces, blocking sunlight and oxygen and impeding marine life health. Dr. Pooja Ray, who has been researching the management of aquatic weeds for more than a decade now, tells us how just a single plant like this can double its biomass in 6 to 18 days to fill up an entire pond so now it has spread to more than 5 lakh hectares all around the country now the problem it poses is, is it came without natural enemies so it grows profusely so then further because of the physiological characteristics reproductive strategies by vegetative and sexual reproduction they grow profusely and as a result when they are go- growing they hamper or reduce or kill the native biodiversity so today it causes global loss in millions of dollars annually to hydroelectricity generation irrigation schemes fisheries water transport and so many other water related activities <laughs> In Bengal in particular the water hyacinth has a complicated history. In the 1920s and 30s the damage caused by the weed was estimated at more than 60 million rupees. Apart from causing widespread diseases like malaria and cholera, crop failure because of water hyacinths was considered to have compounded the 1943 Bengal famine that went on to kill 3 million people. It was around now during the Second World War that the plant earned the ominous title of the terror of Bengal. This plant was introduced in 1889 at our AJC Bose Botanical Garden, then known as Royal Botanical Garden. So they were bringing in plant species from all around the world to, you know, make it a uh, the um, biggest botanical garden in Asia. but then there are other literatures which uh, which says that it was introduced much before that uh, when uh, lord warren hastings became the first governor general of india his wife uh, lady hastings she was profusely interested in plants so um, it is also said that she brought it into india and now it is all over india so since it was introduced into bengal and there was starvation and there was lot of problems that was taking place due to various causes this plant uh, became the terror of bengal today however the hyacinth is a sought after raw material in the nadia district of bengal thanks to gauravanand an engineer who quit his corporate career in 2022 to start the swachhata pukari foundation with the help of locals he is now harnessing obstacles for gain to hum logo ne west bengal mein chuki we were already working with our team and the team from machlandapur and bandgaon was part of our activities since beginning to hum logo ne dekha ki we are already making uh, products like lampshades then notebooks everything 
uh, since last five years. Why not do some research here and make something else? Already adept at upcycling to craft handmade items from water hyacinths, the realization that the plant contains cellulose drove Anand to explore a concept so far uncharted, creating yarn to make saris. While cleaning the water hyacinth from the river, what we found, I'll just show you the fiber of it. After drying, so water hyacinth you would have seen and after drying the water hyacinth, it becomes like this. And when we cleaned the water hyacinth at the river and suppose we forgot to remove from there, the next week we used to go, we used to find like this. Then we saw that there is something like fiber item into it. Why not to explore that? In his latest intervention, Anand uses the fiber extracted from hyacinths and mixes it with cotton to hand weave them into saris. These fusion saris, as they are called, are the latest entrant into Bengal's rich repertoire of handloom saris, locally known as Taat. Here uh, in the fusion sari, we have kept the initial ratio of 15% water hyacinth mixed with 85% of cotton. In addition to solving the problem of the weed itself, these saris also reduce the dependency on cotton. Every kilogram of cotton used in a conventional sari has a water footprint of anything between 8,000 to 20,000 litres. Fabric made from water hyacinths alone has none. But a sari fashioned only from hyacinths lacks the strength needed for the rigours of daily wear, which is why it still needs cotton in the mix. Uh, very soon when we will have mechanical extraction of water hyacinth from the water bodies, we can go with uh, more uh, ratio of this uh, water hyacinth in that. Like we can increase it up to 30 to 40 percent of the mix in fusion. We are now in Shantipur at a distance of about 80 kilometers from Kolkata, a region where most villages were once renowned for hand-woven fabrics. The handlooms today, however, are slowly disappearing. In its heyday, Shantipur was home to close to 60,000 artisans, all dependent on weaving. Custodian of an ancestral craft, today Ranjit Das is in charge of overseeing eight handlooms that weave hyacinth and cotton fibre into saris. The opportunity has provided about 10 weaver families with a new lifeline. No longer cash-strapped, it has saved them from reaching out to money lenders, a recourse many out-of-work weavers are forced to take. The project currently provides employment to more than 100 women artisans who had been struggling because of a declining market. So far, they have created 50 fusion saris using water hyacinths extracted across 35 ponds in the Bongao and Machlandapur regions. Their hope is to make 1,000 saris this year, an ambitious target because it can take up to two to three days to weave a single sari, compared to a power loom that takes about four hours. There are many such handlooms that are changing their work now because they don't get money. And it is very difficult to get time as compared to power loom. So, we actually a platform for them. We don't want them to make handloom saris and go to Bada Bajar and any places and sell it. We want them to make, put their brains just on making saris. We will do some uh, designing part in that and we will market it for them. And whatever values we get, the more than 80% will go to them. 
From Shantipur to Kolkata, these hand-woven sarees are slowly beginning to pique the interest of buyers like Sudeshna, despite the fact that they are priced higher than a conventional tat sari. Free from chemical colors and completely organic, a fusion sari costs about two and a half thousand rupees in India and can fetch up to ten thousand rupees in Europe. That they interested a carone. This is something natural. Or what I have seen, that monekta jinish. Jeto ko fast grow kore arita ekta problem hoy dadiye chhe shobar ka khetre mane ita. So naturally, it is naturally power jay ekta jinish. Jeta khub huge amount of power. Shikhan theke kichhu ekta ki bolbo halu jinish jeta usable jinish toiri hotche. Our material to our मैंने खूबी पहुँचने देर खूब स्मूथ एवं खूब शुंदर जिरम ताते शरी है वो इरोको में ओने एक टा अगर हमारे मने है गौरों में वो कोष्ट हो बे ना कारण ताते शरी पड़े जेए आराम टा है इटा तो ताई हो बे Apart from Shantipur, the epicenter of handlooms, repurposed water hyacinth has also landed in a Kharagpur village called Khalkona Rajar Bacha in Bengal's West Midnapur district. We come across a group of indigenous women, primarily farmers, busy creating artworks from hyacinth paper sheets. Apart from weavers, close to 450 rural women artisans, some of whom live in mud houses, have found an additional means of livelihood. Family to serkom income korar log nei, shudhu hajmenti kore ja. Mane serkom amra to chali tagri na, emni mathe kaj. बाय एम नहीं और राजमिस्त्री ऐसो भी काज करे ना हले बारी तैयार का माने काजल लोग नहीं जहाँ हमरा इखान थे के कोची से इखान थे को हमरा बारी ते काज जन हेल्प कोडी जो अतः तो को हमारे समय पाई माने सब समय तो आर माथेर काज होच्छे ना उतना तो सीजी नहीं होए होर पड़े हमरा ओखाने माथेर काजो कोडी उपरां तो टाइम पे ले ह while the efforts of Anand's foundation seem to be going a long way towards creating livelihood avenues, Dr. Ray cautions against the dangers of overproduction. This is really an appreciable initiative. But again, I would prefer it being controlled uh, compared to uh, being utilized in any way. Because once you have developed a technology, uh, you will start growing this plant. When what we are looking into is, it needs to be eradicated. For now, however, the water hyacinth seems to have evolved into threads of hope for artisans like Dipali. What was once considered a terror, today fetches her an additional monthly income of up to 5,000 rupees. I Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.